Good morning, welcome. My name is Adriana Guerrero and I am with HSBN.TV. My program is called Living in His Presence. And today I want to uh, just kind of come with a little bit of a challenge and opportunity. Um, you know, I was asking the Lord um, in the midst of running around and all that I was doing, what He wanted me to talk about today. And, <clears throat> You know, every opportunity that we have like this, we would just want to make the moment count. And so this morning, I want to bring what I believe is a word of encouragement, but also a challenge for you and also for myself. Um, I've already made up my mind and I would hope that today that you would make up your mind to partner with the Lord and also take this step, um, you know, whatever it is, that you do within your home, if you're at work, not working, and it will be a blessing for you, for your family, and those that you live with, and it will bring necessary change um, in this season. Um, so I was looking at, um, just kind of in the bedroom with the Lord, and just kind of looking at everything that's been going on, you know, in our nation, and it, look, and it looks like so much is going backwards, and it looks like so much is falling apart, and even with certain people uh, that are in my circle, you know, just to see the constant battle, to see the constant um, opposition that comes that the enemy is bringing, you know, and there's a lot of voices, there's a lot on social media, there's a lot on the news, um, just within us as friends, you know, brothers and sisters in the Lord, there's a lot of truth and there's a lot of error and I believe that we need to learn to discern what is the Lord and what is you know just a bunch of noise you know and um, I really feel that in this season uh, what we allow in our ear gate is so vital it's so important and not only that but our eye gate as well because we have to be able to determine uh, the times and the seasons and what is of God and what is the enemy saying um, and you know because they do both speak and these are the only two sources you know there's a, the kingdom uh, the prince of the air which is the enemy and then there's the God you know and and there's so much evil but I feel like there's so much more that's being addressed on what the enemy is doing and so many so many people are fixed on that and that in itself brings fear and it puts you in a place where you're constantly talking about the negative and what the enemy is doing what God is allowing to be exposed and you know all that's going on in our nation is not things that are new it's not things that weren't happening for the last I would say even 50 years I think it's just now being exposed and you know we're in total shock and I don't believe that we should be in total shock because there has been a lot of things that if we go back you know I'm I can go back 20 years and I can recall hearing some things uh, in my ear gate from what I heard and it wasn't social media because we didn't have that we just had television and the voices of others and you know I know in the 80s it was always like oh it's the end times and get ready and I don't even know how people preached about that or spoke about that because there were a lot of prophecies a lot of things that weren't fulfilled yet and so now we're in this time and and you know understanding what God is saying in this season is so important and so vital and so I just want to talk about that even what God says um, to you in this season, it seems like it's far in the distant or it's not going to happen, whether it's in your time that you spend with the Lord or if it's prophetic words. You know, my friend, I won't mention her name, but she uh, left me a voicemail yesterday and she said, you know, it seems like everything that the prophets have said about what's going to take place in my life I feel like I'm living in the complete opposite of what that looks like and that brings doubt and it brings fear and it and it puts you in a place where you know 
you really wonder, it, am I, what am I living for? You know, is, is there really a God? I mean, I don't know how far people go in questioning um, their identity in God or who God is, but it's definitely a, a, a messy place you know, with the things that surround us and who we allow to speak into our ear. And this intense evil that's upon the earth has been messing with so many people and it brings confusion and it brings doubt. But this is a spirit that is speaking contrary to what God has spoken and it is to cause us to get into a place of fear so that we would sink into a place where there is no hope and one of the most important things that I feel that the Lord wanted me to share this morning is um, it has to do with um, like I said the ear gate and the eye gate which has to do with the voices who do we have in our circle who do we have in our surroundings when we're listening to the news when we're on social media you know are we more consumed with what's going on uh, in regards to what everybody else is saying and I mean me myself there's there's so many and I have to make a decision and a choice first and foremost do I allow myself to be present in that moment to continue to hear and hear something that my spirit is not really receiving it so I have a choice and the full power to walk away from that and say you know what? I just don't even want to you know partner with that I don't even want to hear about it because it doesn't set with my spirit and too many of us are getting caught up in the political and the cultural rhetoric and I and I get links sent to me all day long on messenger like watch this link and watch that link and about the virus and about you know the injections and you know all this stuff but I don't even want to view that stuff because all it does it's it's things that are circulating they're circulating and it's so easy to get something and to watch a little portion of it and then go and share and then you're you know sending it to all these people but what are we really uh, putting our attention to when we say we're believers when we say that we're Christians when we say that we are an extension of him are we speaking the oracles of God? Are we in, this, in, the, in the place where we are able to hear Him? Yes, when you have relationship with the Lord, even in the midst of the storm, because you have relationship, you can hear Him. But when there's things circulating and it's not what God is saying, it's what you know the news is saying, it's with social media, it's just circulating around the world. And... I see people everywhere it's like we're robots and we're you know attached to our phones and we're all looking and sending and we're just so consumed with that and I feel even with that in itself the enemy uses the social media the cell phones and everything that goes on in the busyness of it just to keep busy because the last thing the enemy wants is for us to stay connected to the Lord, to hear what it is that He's saying. Because when we are hidden in the things of God with Him, not only are we developing a personal and deeper relationship in and with the Lord, but we're hearing what He's saying. We're, we're seeing and He's showing us more of who He is in that place. So what happens is our faith, we develop, He develops our faith. Uh, you know we have hope in him and we become more like him and the things around us they don't affect us as much you know yes we're still human beings and we're going to experience things on this earth especially you know when it's not directly to us but it affects our loved ones you know we are going to feel you know saddened or we're going to feel um, a sense of pressure or whatever and that's normal and that's okay but I think it's such a huge difference when we have relationship with God when we rely on the goodness of God versus just talking about him we don't ever want to come to God to see what it is that he can give us 
but we want to come to God because we want to uh, go into that place with Him and to be able to rest in Him, to be able to get a away from all the noise, to get away from all the chaos, to get away from what is circulating uh, through social media, through what the news is saying, because we, you know, we can't be ignorant to the truth. And the truth is that the news is only putting out what they want to put out. There's so much still that the Lord is going to allow to be exposed. And we just need to keep uh, connected to the vine, to the Lord. And I know that I have received from the Lord many promises. And in this place where those, so many things are circulating, I can disconnect from what the Lord has said in my life. Because I can look at the situation and be like, Lord, like my friend said, nothing about what's going on looks like what God has said. Nothing that's happening for me, my finances, my job, my schedule, my family, the opposition, none of it looks like what God has promised. And so the enemy will use the busyness. He'll use these um you know, avenues through the news and social media to get us to a place where we won't draw closer to God and where we will begin to doubt even what God Himself has promised us and what has said um, to us, not only directly, but also has confirmed it through the prophets and through His sons and daughters to us. So I want to come today and just encourage you all that between now and election day that you would shut away like never before we've heard this the beginning of the year we've heard it and I think in a way in the beginning was so shocking to us to be put away on time out in this time of reset in this time of mute and so many have gone out there you know protesting and making a voice like the church this the church that but when god really wants us to be behind the mountain he wants us to be in the secret place he wants us to be uh, with him because he wants us to he wants to take us deeper in him and who he is and what he's doing in and through that through us and the reason is because we are an extension of him we are the voice that's going to heed our ear gate to what god is saying and we're going to look at what the spirit of the lord is showing us and that is where we keep our eyes fixed on we don't keep our eyes or get you know unmoved and I talk about this all the time we can't be uh, you know we got to be uh, unmovable and unshakable we can't you know be unstable we have to stick our heels in the sand and we have to dig them and you know we can be let our arms out and rest in the Lord and worship him and in the midst of the chaos and in the midst of the storm He's that still small voice, but he never leaves us, nor does he forsake us. And the best outcome for our nation is going to come from hearing him. It's going to come from hearing God. What is it that he's saying to you? What is it that he's saying to me? And when was, when was the last time that you asked him? And I'm not talking about go into that place and go and see what you feel he's saying and then go on social media and do a live video and start saying thus said the Lord I'm not saying that at all what I'm saying is the best moments and the most accelerated moments that happen in the place where God is equipping you and is developing you your character a place where you can love because he shows you love because he is love a place of righteousness purity holiness humility we're gonna need a lot of love and a lot of humility in this season so I just want you guys to know um, I don't believe that God would allow the sacrifice of his son to be in vain. I don't believe that at all. 
And so this is why I want to challenge you, each and every one of you today, because it is very crucial that each, each and every one of us take the necessary steps to impact the world, to impact you know, those that we're surrounded by, but we are not constantly looking to them to hear what they have to say. It, you know, it's like looking to someone else, tell me what God is saying, when I myself can go directly to Him and hear, what is He saying to me? What He says to me may not be what He says to you. It all aligns, but your mandate and my mandate is different. And everybody wants to sit on the sidelines and and have an opinion it's like i always say you know the the football it's like going to a football game you know that you got the players who are actually on the field they're putting themselves in this place they're in the game they're in the battle they're getting hit they're getting uh you know they have opposition opposers and they're trying to get through that wall to make that touchdown and then you have the whole crowd and what does the crowd do they scream, they get mad, they curse, and they always have an answer as to how they would do it. And that's how many of us function these days. We have an opinion of what others aren't doing, of what others are saying or not saying, or how they're doing it. But we can be the change in this world. We have to allow ourselves to hear, to get familiar with who God is that's where relationship comes from it's in the development in the process of getting to know as you would someone if you were dating them you have to spend quality time with them get to know who they are and you want you you don't want to ever go through someone else to tell you who God is you don't want to go through me for me to tell you who God can be uh, uh, for your life, for your children. Get to know Him yourself. Spend that time. Um, we have to change. We have the answers because God gives us the answers. He doesn't leave us in the dark. You know, there is a cry right now of intercession. There's a cry of intercession that God's people would come to a place and partner with Him because God says in His Word that He intercedes for us. And I believe there's a beautiful garden, you know, where he's at and he intercedes for our nation. You know, he loves our, our this earth. He loves his children, you know, and he sees everything that's going on. And I believe that there is a harvest of God's people who are in alignment with the heart of God. And you and I have to be so on fire for God. What is it that burns in you? That, you, that God has done for you, that you would want to see others that you love in your family, within your children, your husband or wife, uh, those who, prodigal sons and daughters, your lost family who have not yet found the Lord. What's on your heart? What are you passionate about? Because the Lord intercedes. He intercedes for you. And I know that I'm determined. I am determined and I am passionate about partnering with the Lord in prayer and believing and knowing that what it is that I'm constantly, you know, in, um, in prayer for, because it's about consistency as well. It's not a broken record. It's because I believe and it's because, and it's a, a heart of thankfulness, a heart of humility and the knowing, you know, that God, you have this in store for me your word is full of promises and you have spoken these things over my life and because i have relationship you have relationship the lord he doesn't let any of that fall to the ground but our timing is not his timing one thing that uh, i cannot stand is a doom and gloom atmosphere and a people who are constantly complaining and speaking out of a place of fear or a place of um, what the enemy is doing. I, I just don't like it 
when it begins to hit my ear gate, my it's like the, the spirit within me, the Holy Spirit, it's like we quench it because it's not who we are. It's not who God says that we are. So we come into a place where we are align ourselves with the language of heaven. And we don't come into that place where we're constantly giving more attention to what the enemy is doing and the feelings and our emotions because of what we see, because of what we hear. And this is why it's so important that our ear gate and our eye gate is fixed on only what God is saying. And, um, you know, we don't need to come and, and from a place of where, what we believe when we align with the Word of God. We don't need to apologize, but we can be in anticipation and we can get excited because we know that His Word is alive. And we know that God wants to do and perform. We know that He is. You know, He's already moving, but we need to partner with Him. In John 2, remember when um, Jesus was checking out what was going on in the temple? Uh, it was like He was overturning tables. You know, why was He doing that? Why did He do that? It was a zeal. It was a zeal in Jesus to protect His Father's house. And Jesus knew that that was not what his father desired. And it was just like Jesus partnered with his father that we too need to partner with our father and decide who we are going to stand with. So I want to encourage you guys to become so passionate with God's plans and take your eyes off of what's going on and, and thinking that the enemy has the upper hand. If we look at all that's going on, it's going to be pretty bad. In Genesis 6, 5, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. If you consider yourself to be a Christian, then your voice needs to be heard and there is so much lawlessness in the land and we're too quiet. For the first time, I rose up in righteousness. You know, I felt um, the, it was about, I don't know, five days ago and there was a conversation going on and this person in the same sentence had said something that was pretty ugly and there was cursing involved and stuff and then they used the word Jesus Christ in the same sentence and there was a righteous anger that rose up in me and I didn't come and attack or say anything wrong to the person but I used the authority that rose up in me but with love and I addressed that situation and do you know that others around me, it's like their eyes were like, oh my gosh, how is this person going to react? They just assumed that the person I addressed was going to rise up and attack me or come back at me in, a, in an ugly way. But the other people that were there, they don't know the conversation that me and this other individual have had in you know with ourselves by ourselves away from them so otherwise I may not have addressed it right there and then but I did and you know in front of them he said you know what you're right and thank you for correcting me because that did sound totally the opposite of what I have said to you when I've sat and talked to you and I do need to make up my mind and I, I do need to stop making these excuses because of the familiarity of like where we come from or our past or our background. And so it was so, I was actually a little bit shocked that he addressed me and thanked me. And, and it's not that I needed to be thanked or anything like that. But what I'm saying is I, I rose up in that. You know, and it's, I believe that that's the heart of God, like He needs people. You know, we were always meant as Christians, as God's children, to possess, you know, to, to 
possess the land, to um, be not in control, but to be above those, like, you know, if when there's, you know, the court system, right? You have lawyers and you have DAs and you have judges, but we have these people that are so corrupt. And I believe that it was God's intention for us as his children to be in the front lines, to have a voice. And so that's, that's something that just rose up in me and we need to be that voice. And that's, what I'm here to encourage you that from now to election day, tuck away, disconnect from the noise, watch what's coming in your ear gate and your eye gate. There's so much, like I said, that's circulating. Get away from that. It's a challenge and it's an encouragement. I'm doing it myself. Disconnect from that. Allow yourself the process to go deeper in God, to hear what it is that He's saying. And you know what? He's looking for intercessors. Remember, God intercedes. He intercedes for you. He intercedes so He hears you as you're interceding for your prodigal sons and daughters, for your family. You're believing and you're contending for God to do something with them and in them. And He hears you. How much more power and authority is it when you partner with the Lord in that? So as we, and but it's not only about us and our family because God knows our needs before we even come to Him. So I just want to encourage you, come into that place with the Lord. Intercede for our president, for our nation, that the Lord would continue to expose these people that are doing evil, this lawlessness on the land, and just love one another and allow yourself to be used in, in your environment and where God has you right now because you have a voice and what you say means and holds so much value. And I just pray that this word has encouraged you. I thank you for joining me today. Again, my name is Adriana Guerrero and this is Life in His Presence. I'm sorry, living in His presence. And I just want to um, pray, Father God, thank you for your word today. I thank you, Father God. I pray that you would visit everyone right now in their homes, wherever they're at, and encourage them, Father God. And I pray, Lord, that you raise them up, Lord, to be, Father God, an extension of who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.